The mornings are a little colder and the sun comes to warm our homes a little later. Seasons come and go, but you can be sure that we'll be here for as long as you tune in. Assalamu alaikum, shukran for joining this week's Anur The Light. Hassant Abada cut his teeth in the media at a young age and his star has continued to rise over the years. We got to spend a day in his life to get to know him a little better. Hassan Abada has been a mainstay of the South African media landscape for the better part of 15 years. From print, television, radio and online media, Hassan boasts a career as diverse as the breaking news stories he has woven. When I got to Matric, I had no idea really what I wanted to do. I was toying with the idea of marketing and business or commerce, but I couldn't do maths really well, or science for that matter. And, but I was very good at telling stories and writing essays, and my essays would often be read to other classes. And so one of my, my English teachers said to me, why don't you try a career in journalism? And that's where I, 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 I started thinking about it and applied. But my Afrikaans teacher, so it was a combo of English and Afrikaans teacher, my Afrikaans teacher then took me to a workshop at the Burger on a Saturday where they taught newspaper production to schoolgoers, you know, which was really cool. And since then, I haven't looked back. After a chance encounter with the media industry in high school, Hassan was hooked, pursuing his journalism career with gusto. Today, Hassan works tirelessly as regional executive editor, functioning as both editor-in-chief and managing editor of the Cape Argus. I am the regional executive editor for independent media in the Western Cape, which simply means I look after the strategic management of all our titles here in Cape Town. People will be familiar with the Cape Argus and the Cape Times, Weekend Argus, Cape Community and Newspapers and the Daily Voice. And it's to ensure that we're hitting the right target markets, that we have a plan for the revenues, we have a strategic plan for these titles, looking after the hygiene, that we keep it in style. And um, I do a bit of writing as well, because I have a column every Friday in the Cape August. Hassan ingests up to 15 online articles before putting a foot out of bed and divides each day between managing upcoming editorial projects and sourcing marketing opportunities. All this whilst keeping up with his weekly Cape Argus column, The Friday Files. What I like and what keeps me going every day is no two days are exactly the same. There's always new challenges and fresh challenges. At the moment, we've just restructured our business and gearing up for the digital revolution, which has been with us for a while, granted. But you know, these products are very traditional and we've had to make the change to becoming live newsrooms. So I'm very much, not so much hands-on as I used to be, but very involved in the products. And um, I'm also dabbling in a bit of a, the commercial side to make our papers viable and financially viable especially, to make sure that we can look after the journalism. So we have to have the vanity projects and the content, custom content projects to pay for the real journalism. And I think in that space I'm enjoying it because I'm learning about different aspects of our business. Um, but I thrive on people, and I thrive on seeing people excel. So it's, I, get not, not, I get no bigger kick than seeing somebody who I mentored become a leader in their own right and, and, and excelling in their own space, you know? Beyond the newsroom, Hassan is an avid golfer, although it does become difficult finding time to hit a few balls. I am really bad at golf. I've been a 24 handicapper for the last maybe seven years. So I started playing, practice bad habits because I didn't have lessons and got so frustrated that I stopped playing. The thing about golf is you can have a terrible round of golf, but it takes you out of the hustle and bustle of city life. You can be playing a terrible round of golf. There's one shot that you will nail that will be, it will bring you back for more the next time. It's very expensive, but I love doing it. And it's my little escape from reality, you know. Priorities changed, however, once there was a family and the days of chasing after stories have been replaced with spending time with his wife and children. You start thinking differently when you become a dad. 
you know, you see life through the eyes of a father and you start considering the subject of the news stories you do. So you look at it through very different eyes. So my kids have given me that uh, ability to step back and to look at life through a different lens, you know? But they've also brought a lot of joy in my life. The role of newspapers may change, but the need for it won't. Hassan envisions a future in which the media is used as a means of connecting communities and strongly advocates a new kind of journalism aligned with the greater good of society. Our social media pages is the place to connect with us whenever the need arises. If you have any suggestions, ideas, or just want to let us know how it's going, then please post, like, or share. Molana Ibrahim Bam has slotted quite well into the hot seat, and we're ever so thankful that he's taken time off his busy schedule to be of service to the community. Here's this week's Q&A. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Molana Ibrahim Bam, and I welcome the viewers to this program of Anur the Light and the question and answer segment. We begin by praising the Almighty Allah for his many favors upon us and salutations be upon all the messengers of the Almighty, especially the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amongst the questions we have received from the viewers over time, I will try and endeavor to give a short answer to some of those queries. Amongst the questions that we have received is, please explain, Mona, how does Melka works? Very interesting question, sometimes it does happen. Now we should keep in mind that one of the reasons people get married is to save themselves from temptation. Islam does not allow premarital relations, especially if that relationship even goes beyond just mere relationship and ends up in types of intimacy, etc. That is something that is forbidden in all the previous religion, all the divine scriptures and also in Islam. Now, if, for example, there is a relationship between a girl and a boy who are in university, and instead of them keeping that relationship, which is forbidden in Islam, there is nothing wrong. And it is permissible for them to get married and for them to stay by their parents. Another question that has been received is, Molana, is a father allowed to disown his kids? What does Islam say about this act? We have to keep in mind that parenthood is a very great, wonderful gift to human beings by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Together with the joy of being a parent, there's also responsibilities. And one of the responsibilities is that it is not permissible for you to disown your children. A father cannot say that after I've passed away, whatever I have got, this particular child will not inherit from me. From me. Now, the way people, people normally say, you can choose your friends, you cannot choose your relatives. You cannot choose your children. They are your biological children. You have responsibilities towards them. If you, for example, feel that a certain child has done you good and he has been more kind towards you while you are alive, you can give him more in your lifetime. But the moment you pass away, all your children will inherit according to the laws which have been prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. Another question which has been received is, Moana, I was told I cannot bury my Christian father and make arrangement for his funeral in a church if he dies. I'm his only son in Cape Town who supports him, and I have no one else to give him a burial. What do I do in this situation? Keeping in mind that Ali radiallahu ta'ala came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and said, my father Abu Talib had passed away, and he did not pass away upon the faith. The Prophet of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, just go and bury him. So just to do that, if there is no one else to do it, then, it would be taken from that incident, that only in this incident, otherwise not on a general incident. So therefore, we have just given these answers. If anyone needs more detailed answers with regard to what we have provided, please do not hesitate to contact me or to contact the Annur team. And please keep the questions rolling to the Annur team. We will endeavor to answer them in our next program. And we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Muslim traders form the backbone of the community. We spent some time in Durban where we got to learn a little bit more about the history of those early business pioneers.
Passenger Indians was the term given to Indian people who arrived in South Africa from the Indian subcontinent during the 1870s. Many of them came to service the growing indentured labour market made up of their countrymen and women who were brought in to work the sugarcane fields of KwaZulu-Natal. Professor Suleiman Dango researched the history of these early traders and published a book that looked at their foundations as well as the impact in KwaZulu-Natal over a hundred years. The Minara Chamber of Commerce uh, was interested in capturing the history of the Muslim traders. And I had just retired from university and I was looking for a research project. So let's say our interests coincided. So they commissioned me to write the book. Uh, I found some biographies, earlier biographies, and, uh, but of course they didn't color, cover all of the traders. There were quite a few uh, who were missing there and so on. So I thought I'll take uh, from those earlier publications, but then started doing interviews. I did over 100 interviews, uh, you know, as many as I could, and those were included in the book. Um, of course, photographs, uh, some of them were in earlier publications, but the others I got from family members who had uh, the old photographs. So we, uh, we used all of those. There were a number of families who laid down roots and established businesses that were to stand the test of time. They encountered many challenges as laws restricted their economic, political and residential rights in the country. Most Muslim pioneers settled and traded in West Street, later moving to Field, Commercial and Gray Streets due to the apartheid restrictions. Group areas also played a big part. The businesses that Abu Bakr Amor had in West Street uh, he was eventually squeezed out um, and properties were expropriated as well. So that had quite a, a, an effect. My father then, as he grew up into his 30s, he had a partnership with A.I. Kaji, who was a politician, and my father then became uh, the biggest uh, owner with A.I. Kaji of cinemas in South Africa. Most of those were expropriated. They had cinemas in... Kimberley, Bloemfontein, Port Elizabeth, East London, Johannesburg, Durban, um, all over the country. But you must remember this preceded group areas. It started off in the 30s. And then when the group areas came, most of the cinemas were expropriated. Initially, most of them started in clothing, spices or textiles, but ventured into other enterprises. Some of the early traders left behind well-established businesses that have grown and remained within their families. As you realize in the apartheid era, we are restricted for going out of, of, of Durban. And majority of the, 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 the population that we serviced were the Indian community that was here for their school wear, for whatever uh, needs they required. And <clears throat> we probably, most of the other uh, families that came from the same village were also settled in Durban. As the new generations are coming in, obviously they will now have to find other motives to create more employment, get into uh, industry again and see what else they can do besides clothing. The legacy of these business people live on in all they've left behind. Streets, buildings and even schools bear the names of the early traders in recognition of their contribution to the city. There are a number of buildings here which have been donated by Muslims and they are named after Muslims. Uh, there are a number of schools, uh, you know, not for Muslims, but a number of schools <coughs> in the town, um, in the rural areas, which were established by Muslims. The Islamic Medical Association has clinics in uh, many of the areas where there are no hospitals and government clinics. So they, you know, in the health sector they have contributed. Um, so, and of course, you also know the R.K. Khan Hospital that was donated by one individual, the original, uh, you know, to start off the hospital. <clears throat> you know about M.L. Sultan Technical College, also by M.L. Sultan. Since 1994, there have been many, many uh, Muslim politicians or MPs uh, because many of them were actually involved in the liberation struggle. So even politically, I think they have made a great contribution. Muslim Indian traders in Durban continue to contribute towards the success of the country and have grown in numbers ever since, making a difference in various spheres of study. The legacy of Indian families and their descendants shall forever live on.
the history of Muslims remains an important topic for us and we will continue to bring you more such stories. Time now for our travel segment from Sunny Santon. South Africa's democracy came at the cost of many lives and we should never forget this. In order for us to move forward, we need to know about our past and Lily's Leaf is a good place to learn. Lily's Leaf is an important historical site that represents a seminal period in our liberation struggle. It was a period that defined the trajectory of the struggle from 61 onwards to the point of the 1994 democratic elections. The farm where the Ravonia trialists were arrested has been turned into a living center of knowledge where visitors get to know more about what happened here. Well, when people come today, they are able to go into the historical site where we're standing and go through the historical structures and interact with dynamic, immersive exhibits which tells the story of that unique period, tells the story of our liberation struggle. If you want to understand how Nelson went from here down to Brief Chief Latuli and then ultimately was arrested on his return to Johannesburg, you must come to Lilisi. People can come here, not only enjoy the experience of going through a journey of discovery and inspiration, but afterwards relax in the coffee shop with good food to reflect, to contemplate, and to think about what they've just experienced and what they've gone through. No visit to Johannesburg is complete without a stop over at this historical place and it is important for us locals to make an extra effort to visit Lily's Leaf Farm. In the heart of Santon City shopping centre and on display for all to see are some of the best confectionery delights that will please the stomach as much as it pleases the eye. This Bell's Patisserie is on the go. So it's more a kiosk. You come and you have a quick meal and off you go. We sell lots of cakes and cupcakes and all those kind of yummy goodies, but it's not, it's a pause area. Ensconced inside clear glass holders, there are decadent, buttery, cheesy chocolate croissants that are melt in the mouth delicious, but these are just some of the favorites depending on your taste. We're really famous for our red velvet cake. I'd say that's what we're most famous for. But all our cakes, we won best patisserie three, four years in a row, best coffee shop this year. Um, so our cakes are unbelievable. All our patisserie, we're definitely the market leaders in that. But we've also developed beautiful French style patisserie food that people are starting to understand. So when you think of bells, you often think of uh, cakes. I've got really beautiful on-the-go salads, Caesar salads, beautiful sandwiches, and we make everything ourselves. So the bread on the sandwiches we bake in-house. Everything is made by us. The halal food market continues to grow and many restaurants see value in getting the stamp of approval. Next time you're in the mall, take a load off and indulge your craving for cakes and sandwiches. If you're up for an afternoon fun in the sun, then look no further than the bike park in Santon. Put aside a few hours as you shred and huck your way around the course. We are the PwC Bike Park, situated in Bryanston. We have a uh, venue that uh, caters for parties, uh, corporate events, but we've also got 15 kilometers of the best single track that we believe you can find in South Africa. We cater for the families, so from the age of uh, young riders from two, three years old up to, up to 80, 90 years old. So any rider that can ride uh, is welcome to come and use our facilities at the bike park. So all uh, riders of all ages, all skills levels uh, come and ride here at the bike park. Young and old can enjoy themselves in a safe environment and the track is a nirvana for outdoor bike enthusiasts. We've got the, uh, the pump track here which is a, it's a skills facility, but awesome for, for the kids. And then we've got the jump tracks, and then we've got the trail, uh, trails. We've got about 15 kilometers, as I said, of single track uh, trails. And um, they're all clearly marked. So whenever you enter a section of the park, it is clearly marked as to what the section offers, and riders can see what they can expect when they enter the section. 
The track caters to all skill sets, and both professional and beginner cyclists make use of the facility. Weekends can be crowded, so come early to avoid the crowds. And just when I thought Stanton didn't have much more to offer than malls and car parks. We've reached the end of the show. Don't forget to tune in next week, same time, same place. Kinna Mare Mukonda, Salang Hantle, Asalaamu Alaikum. Man's a crazy, 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 crazy. Believe me, we don't take it lightly. Protecting our deen, we respect the Almighty. We're the truth seekers, and we're coming now. Stopping all these mans, we're spreading down. Let me tell them what the deen's all about. The irony, the irony. Some say ya Ali, we say ya Allah. But even blessed Ali would say that they're wrong. Because he stood up for Tawhi. Allah is the one and only They don't uh, wanna uh, know They're chasing after dunya They don't wanna uh, hear ya uh, 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 They don't uh, wanna uh, know uh, I'm not trying to judge ya We uh, can all be better uh, 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 They don't wanna know They don't wanna know They just happy with the dunya They don't wanna know They don't wanna know They don't wanna know They just happy with the dunya They don't wanna know Bismillah They don't know what the Salaf knew Use their name in your song, you ain't got a clue Brothers lost, they don't know about the harm they do Make music, spread lies and you harm the youth Bro, I swear I try, I, try. I never compromise Give doubt, spread the truth and we avoid the lies Bro, I know it's rough, I know the dunya's tough Tough. See the fame and the money's got you all caught up Never give up and never give in, nah Never give up, let go of the sin, let go Pray your salah, inshallah you win yeah, all well, thanks is to him, and he is the king, Allah. The sheets and instruments don't mix, no. They say they got opinions, we say no. Because we got facts, they should know. But do they wanna know? No, no, no. My Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon them. The Sahabas and the four Imams all said, they all said the same. The truth is right in front of us, stay away from instruments, they don't wanna know. Even you the evidence, what you gonna do about it? They don't wanna know, they don't wanna know They just happy with the dunya, they don't wanna know They don't wanna know, they don't wanna know They just happy with the dunya, they don't wanna know A message to our lost youth Who are being pushed away from the truth Some Muslim YouTubers start with Islamic videos Why is it as views increase, the Islamic videos decrease? It's like taking innocent Muslims for a ride or fatwa shopping, hopping from one opinion to another. Music is halal, free mixing is halal. What will it be next? Zina is halal? May Allah forgive us. I mean, I don't get it. We say the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said a time will come when people from my ummah will make music. Alcohol is in the halal.